Sancho's. He's done it! Can you believe it? That's impressive. Caught him early. Finish the fight. I don't have any distraction. Focus 100% on my train, on my rest, on my recovery. I love my family, but in life, if you want to get things, you know, if you want to active your goals, you need to make sacrifices. I had a small motorcycle. Many times, I come on the toll road. Those times, the toll road is like one quarter. For many times, I, I don't have the quarter to pay the toll. But every time I talk about quitting, somebody tell me, man, keep doing it. You have amazing talent. People today see me as a champion, but people don't have an idea what the fighter press through. Fighting out of the great fighting city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Nothing more than I enjoy than being in a fucking fight. Nothing gets me more fucking excited than when someone says, not gonna happen. This is bad for Pettis. I told you so is my favorite thing to tell people. I work a lot to be here. I pass through good, bad moments. We got his chance, and he's trying to take my dreams, crush my dreams, but nobody can take this away from me. I win against world champions, that's what I do. I've done it my whole career. I've beaten world champions. Damn, that move. Come July 7th, I'm gonna do everything it takes and I'm gonna win. I'm gonna fucking win the UFC world title. Watch me. Where we're at right now is known as Kensington. Uh, Kensington is probably best known for the fighters that come out of here. Um, a lot of great people come out of here. It's Rocky's house was right down the street, although he's fictional, but this is where it was, Joe Frazier. Unfortunately, this area now is known for its drugs. It's a, a big drug area here in Philadelphia. That's a, a needle, obviously, someone's discarded on the ground here. Not exactly what you want on the ground if your kids were out here. Kids here have choice. At the age of 16, they got to make the decision where they're going to be a part of that drug business or they're going to go on their own and do something better. As far as influence in my life, I, ha I had a few of them. You know, my dad influenced me always as a young kid. He always told me even if I learned how to fight, sort of take advantage of it, don't. Don't use it out in the street and things like that. I had some uh, influences throughout sports. You know, Bill Hunter was a big influence in my life. When Eddie was a little kid, I used to drive down his block all the time and see him. I just got to know him there and I talked to him. I seen where he lived and uh, I, I told him to come on out for the wrestling team. The wrestling program there is what shaped my competitive career today. It was very strict, very disciplined, and very hard-nosed. 
One of our sayings were, if it was easy, everyone would be on this team. But it wasn't easy. And uh, he made that choice where he uh, chose a different path. He could have very easily went the other path and joined the rest of the people up here with no future. I can never, ever pay for the lessons that, that I've learned, ever. I learned too many, and I worked too hard there. And um, it's something that'll stay with me forever. Man, Singapore, since I come here for the first time, construction everywhere, man. All the legs. Seven years, man. Every time I come here, people, they, they don't stop building things, man. For example, this hotel that I'm staying, they are only five years old. Hello, hi. I have three big, please, three big ones. Perfect. Thank you. First time I came, the gym that we're training now, that, you know, that was, didn't exist too, you know, that we have only one location, which was a small gym on the, on the, on the other side of the city. have a great guys, great Muay Thai guys. I got to training with these guys back in 2009. I was already fighting in UFC. And you know, it gave me a different perspective of what, what is fighting, standing. That killer over there, man, that guy's a beast, man. That with the 65 t-shirt, yeah. This guy hold meats. Went to Canada a couple of times to hold for George St. Pierre, too. Feel like a fight. First round that he held for me here, my arm was done, but one month later, it got usually already. Whew. When you train with really true Muay Thai guys, you got to know how they think. How you can avoid some strikes, some attacks. They always have new tricks, new tips. Not many people in MMA know how to fight with their elbows. And these Thai guys, when they do crazy things, you know, they have the perfect timing. And elbows are something that hurt a lot. Elbows and knees, you know. I'm trying to come here to get that confidence to do this on fight night. Everything him him can do for Muay Thai is very, very good. <laughs> Everything is good. Very easy for him. <laughs> oh, easy. Even as a UFC champion, I don't think I... I don't think I'm the best, you know. I, I, I still have a lot of things to learn. I know inside my mind that I don't know everything. And if somebody tried to show me something, I will listen. And I think that's what makes a difference, you know, as being a champion like that. And I look forward to being like that for the rest of my life. We met when we were 15. Jamie used to pick me up from Kensington, the most wonderful place on earth. I, we were like good, but like, I don't want to say bad kids, but maybe. When I was younger, I, I hung out with a, a crowd of people and we were getting, getting a lot of fights and things like that. But I was, in, I was at, in a different neighborhood at a playground and I ended up getting in a fight. With a, with a couple of guys, and um, the only person that jumped in was Jamie. Jumped on the guy's back, started hitting him. It was a defining moment, I guess, in our, in our relationship. <laughs> and I know if someone would fight with me, then I could spend the rest of my life with him. <laughs> what are you doing? A lot of his friends were fighting a lot. 
on the street. Um, it was just like someone's really gonna get hurt, be killed. What's up, Eddie? What's up, dude? And like little by little, I'm like, sooner or later, that's that'll be me. I'll be one of them guys, either got hurt or hurt somebody or arrested. <laughs> So let's take something that's considered bad by society. Now, right over there, where the UFC is in MMA, they consider it good. He is Eddie Alvarez. You get a big fat check, people love it, people scream and cheer, and you can make a life out of it. For me, I looked at it like, okay, you're taking what you are good at, and you're using it in a controlled environment, you're getting paid for what you want to do, it was a good out of a bad. That's how I viewed it. Usually, I, I my last meal is around 11, 12 a.m. I always go for a walk at night after dinner. Lots of. People like, like the night. So a lot of people in the street, you know, a lot of places open still. It's very safe, man. I'm here for one month. I think I saw one police car, one. In Singapore, I get to, you know, breathe different air, learn different things, you know, get out of my routine. I think that's important. Coming here, like, motivate more, you know? I, I feel more motivated when I come here. Thank you for calling Pino's. Can I have your phone Thanks, buddy. We've been uh, here in Woodbridge, uh, New Jersey, for over 20 years. So we box them with the fighters and we box pizzas at, uh, during the daytime a little bit. Bring your head in a different angle. Your head keeps coming, same angle. Bring your head in one way and then change your head on a different angle. That's, good. That's all you have to do. We're here to go. I get away with some things that other gyms can't. It's hard when you have like 100 people at a gym or 80 people at a gym, it's pretty tough to do so. Like, you know, they need more guys, more money, where I'd rather give more attention and do for here, they're waiting on it, guys. And this helps me be able to really concentrate on the fewer instead of the many. You gotta change your angles coming in. Change your angles coming in, step off. You're starting to come in a little too much. Everything started with Frankie 12 years ago. I helped pass for him one time, like, I oh, you know, I think this kid's pretty bright and fast, and uh, wound up training him again, and that was that. Frankie Edgar retains his title in devastating and very satisfying fashion. See how fast you went with the second go? That's what you gotta do. You gotta quick up that second one if you're going double. See? See if you keep going that way and keep that hand up, you're gold. So yeah, just I keep started, the right hand up. I started floating that way and then. It don't matter if it's slow, it don't matter if it's fast, you just have to have a, a feel for when it's coming. One, one. One, two, one, one. One, two, slip, slip. Good. Eddie, uh, he always wants to get better. That's what you need. Good. You need that white belt mentality. Yeah, good. One, one. You know, you have a white belt and his eyes are wide open. And you see a white belt's excited to try new techniques and to try new things. You follow what I'm saying? Because he's coming back with right hands after your kicks. Don't wait in front after you're done throwing. Relax. See him right here? It's an exciting time for me, correcting a bunch of mistakes and realizing, like, man, we can we can keep adding to this on and on and on. It doesn't stop. Deep with that. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Alvarez, an old school fighter with old school values. That's nasty. Strong one by Alvarez. Good right hand there by Alvarez. Damn, there you go. It's guys like Eddie that just make it so infectious that Eddie comes, it doesn't raise the room a little bit. It raises the room a lot. One more two, two shot. Alvarez exhausting the former champion. That's the champion at factor, you know, just having that hunger, having that, that non-stop attitude. Big win for Eddie Alvarez. Once you have that, I mean, you can conquer the world with it. Good. He's the last guy I took out. He was former champion. I want the champion next. Give me the champion.
Esse faixa roxa aqui é bom pra, se der pra ir com ele. Esse de branco ali, ó. É mais pesado assim, mas não é muito técnico. É. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu right there, Mike. Switches to an arm bar. Oh, he may get it. He's Looking got it for the arm bar. Can he finish his fight? Did it picture perfect. Blocked that arm bar for the win. One, two, three, you can? Five, you probably know how to tie the belt better than McGregor. <laughs> right? I showed you last time. This UFC champion. They post picture training on Gi, but they don't even know how to tie the belt. You gotta split on half, you know, go there, come back. It's pretty easy, guys. That's the first class. shut my mouth with the wire, you know. I was like that. And he's holding onto his jaw. You see him doing that right now. Yeah, damaged jaw and the pressure of Guida forces the tap. I was not only with my jaw broke, but with my heart broken too, my mind broken. He's pressing down on him with his shoulder. He, he, he is had an he injured jaw. jaw. Yeah. I thought I would never be able to fight again. I left everybody behind. Stay here three, four months. And you know, it gave me a different perspective. You guys, go! I had people that believe on me, pushing me to keep what I was doing. And I got back on track, and then I fought Sotiropoulos and knocked him out in 59 seconds. <laughs> It's not easy this fight of life, but everything worked out well. I won my fights and I started making my living, you know, step by step. This is the best Dos Anjos we've ever by seen. By far. Everyone here, I wish you uh, good luck for his next fight. All right, good luck, Rafael. Here I am, six years later, as a champion. I worked hard for that and, man. Nobody can take this away from me. I started this journey 13 years ago. Alvarez is ready to go, and here we are underway in the summer. And it's all about to come to a head. I held the lightweight title for numerous promotions. At the same time, When I originally signed with Lorenzo Fertitta and I sat down and talked to him, I said, look, I want to fight the best guys that you have in this promotion, the best guys in the world. When you fight the best guys in the world, you only become better. Fight to start when we signed the belt agreement. A lot of people want to be champion, but nobody want to sacrifice like a champion. You know, I'm investing time, money. Oh, my career. Oh, that's a bag. Everything that's ever happened to Ed has brought him to this point to be ready for this fight. It's a great challenge, and we love challenges. The only guarantee I know that he's going to go out there and give 100%, because that's the only way he knows. Look at this, all you work for, your family's out there watching. We're going to go after him like a devil, make this fight good and violent. I'm ready to suffer. You just get what you earn. And that's it. The hand speed and the power of Dos Anjos, just perfect. I've been in UFC for eight years already. Oh, there goes Henderson! I beat the best. You can write it down. I beat a champion for long more years. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Alvarez. 
takes the right opponent to get in front of me. Dos Anjos all over him early. I like this guy. He fights violent, he fights with a high pace. I'm looking forward to putting someone dangerous in front of me and putting my back against the wall. July 7th, Philadelphia will have their first lightweight champion.